All right, hello everybody. My name is Steven, and I am very proud to be presenting the first module of the month at the best chippy meeting ever. And uh, I, I think that the, the Python standard library is really big. It's got a lot of cool stuff in it. And I think not everybody knows about all the cool stuff that's in it. I didn't know about Mock until uh, you know, maybe a year or so ago. And it's pretty fun. So Mock is in um, this, this notebook is on my GitHub, by the way, if you care about looking at it later. So Mock is in the standard library. It's in the unit test package. And what is it? So the mock is everything. Uh, <laughs> create a mock object. Um, maybe I should step back and give some context. You're doing unit tests. You have uh, some piece of code that's maybe, maybe it's really big. Maybe one of your functions is, is launching a dozen EC2 instances to compute something on Elasticsearch. And you really don't want to launch those dozen instances every time somebody runs a unit test. So what do you do? You mock things. Uh, the mock object. You create a mock object. Does it have this attribute? Oh, look, it has that attribute. What is that attribute? It's another mock object. You can pretend to call things. It gives you a mock object. You can call a lot of things. You get a mock object back. If you call the same thing more than once, you get the same mock object back. So you see there's an ID there. That ID is the same as the one a few, thing, uh, a few things up. You can set up your mock objects. Ah, what just happened? I don't know what just happened. Ah, there it is. Sorry, scrolling too strangely. Um, yeah, you can set up your mock objects and put values in them. And the values are there if you ask for them later. You can, you can tell it what, uh, what you want it to return. So there, I've told it that on this mock, there is another mock called create estimator. And if I call that as, an, as, a, as a function call, it should return me a logistic regression object from scikit-learn. And look, there it is. You can make a mock that looks like something else. So here is a mock that looks like a logistic regression object. If you ask it what it is, it will tell you it's a logistic regression object. It has the fit function, which is a mock object, but it doesn't have this other method, which logistic regression objects don't have. You can use this side effect thing, which is enormously intuitively named. It took me a long time to figure that one out. And there, you call it once, zero. You call it twice, one. You call it again, and look, you get a value error. So you can control how these things work so that you can, you can control the, the, beha the apparent behavior of these external objects or these long to compute things inside your tests. How might you use them in a test? Here's an example. So I have this really simple function. It's, um, it's, going, it's taking a scikit-learn estimator, and it's predicting something, and it's telling you what the index of the most likely thing is. So here it is with a mock. I'm creating a mock that looks like a logistic regression. I am saying what this thing should be returning when I call it. And I'm giving some, some input function here. Now I call my function with the mock. And I am asserting that, I got, that the, my function can correctly predict the thing. I know what it should be because I told it what, what the logistic, re logistic regression should be predicting. Here, there's this function, assert called once with. And if you look over there, so I'm asking the mock, what have you been called with? What was your input argument? And then I'm saying, it should be calling predict proba, not predict. And so on the mock, I say, you have, not call, you have not had the method predict called on you. And the test passes because it didn't. Uh, patching. So patching is another fun thing in the mock module. So here, I'm importing scikit-learn inside this function. And so in my test, I'm using this patch decorator, which means that when you go into this function, scikit-learn cross-validation will be replaced with a mock object. You can tell it to replace things, you can patch with other objects, but by default it does mocks. And so when I call this function, uh, when I call this test function now, I am testing uh, similar to the last one, uh, but this time I'm mocking out cross-validation. I'm saying what the cross-validation uh, function should return, and I'm testing that uh, my function did indeed uh, find the right answer, which it did. 
And you can say, how many times were you called? I was called once. OK, mocks. So when you find mock, you can, uh, you, there's a temptation to go overboard. Look at all these things I can test. Look at how much I can test, how much about what I'm calling I can test. So here's this function that just, it takes a local file and takes a, a location in S3 and uploads your local file to S3. And it, it checks to make sure there's nothing already there in S3. And if there is something there, it raises an error. And so here's my, my test function. I've now patched Bodo3, so Bodo3 is a mock. And I call my function that I wish to test with, all, with a whole bunch of stuff. And look, I'm asserting the total number of calls that have ever been made on that function or any of its, its sub-mocks. It's got to be six. And this function was called once with these arguments. And oh, look, there's, um, there's a resource thing, and it was called once with with this uh, my bucket argument. And you know, at, at this point, what exactly are you testing, right? The point of unit tests is to make sure that your function does what you want it to do. And you shouldn't really care what's going on inside of that function. So why do I care that Bodo is instantiating a bucket object with this argument my bucket? And why do I, like, why is this number even six? Why do I care about that number six? So um, yeah, mock. It's really great, it's fun, it's easy to use, I love it, but please, don't go overboard. You can, it's, it's too magical. The magic is a lot, so just be careful with the magic. Thank you. <laughs> if we have time, sure. <laughs> I, I don't know if there are unit tests for the mock module. That's a good question. <laughs> Does it use mocks? <laughs> All right. You might be using legacy Python, yes. Mock is only available in Python. Mock is only available in Python, not legacy Python. <laughs> Python 3, I think it's new as of 3.3, in fact. Uh, in, what's that? In 2.7, is it a standard library in 2.7? I know it was an external module. It's only a standard Yes, that's, yeah, that's, that's what I meant. You can, uh, you can get it externally in 2.7. Yeah, but that's boring. You should really be using 3.5. 3.5 is cool. <laughs> coverage is great. You should be completely covered at all times. Otherwise, <laughs> yes, exactly. Coverage. Coverage is um, the percent of your code that's hit by test functions. So um, there are ways to check coverage. So there is a, a library called Nose, which will automatically find and run your tests for you. And Nose will also check uh, which of your functions in your code have been called by test functions and which haven't. And it will give you a cool report at the end and say, your code is 92% covered, and these specific lines were never, ever called during your tests. So it's actually a, a good way to check and make sure that you're testing everything that you need to be testing. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I had an example using the side effect, uh, the side effect setting. There's a whole lot of complication to, to uh, the mock module. And the documentation is not the best. And I won't say that I understand all of the ways you can use mock modules. But uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty flexible. Last question. Yeah, thanks, Andrew, for a lightning talk. Andy, 